This is a tutorial using my new digital kit called Flowers and Vintage Documents that you can see right now on the screen. So we're going to create this junk journal, this envelope junk journal together and you can see the process. So what you need is an envelope. This is a 6 by 9 inches and uh, as you can see it's an envelope and I already coffee stained it. So it's, I don't know, I love the, the texture of an envelope like that. It's kind of, it's not a cardstock, but it, because there's two, two papers there, it feels like it's grungy and it's rigid enough. And I just love making little junk journals of that size and with the envelopes. So what I did is I trimmed a paper already just to spare you the time to look at me. So I trimmed it just to leave like a, a little border like that. And I already stained it with the Distress ink. So now what I need to do is just put some glue stick and I just go in the middle. I just to hold it in place correctly because what's going to hold that paper is a stitching line so if you don't have a sewing machine then you need to glue it really carefully with a good glue and i would suggest the glitter art so you can do a tiny line at on the sides and you can use glue stick in the middle or the glitter art again in the middle but um <clears throat> i prefer the sewing machine so i'm gonna do the sewing machine so i don't care if it's not glued correctly on the sides because the sewing machine will do the job i'm done so i love seeing the thread the line it's i love that so if I fold my journal into two, it will look like that. And you can hear it's already, it's already great. Just like that, adding a ribbon here and attaching it could be a simple journal that is already so cute, but we're going to embellish it. So let's keep going on this page this collage page in the kit and I think I'm gonna use this little girl to create a decoration at the front so I teared down the little girl this is what it can look like and then I need to add some layers under it and not that much because the flowers are really cute and it does a great job with the background so because i don't want to hide my paper i'm going to use um parchment paper or tracing paper that has been coffee stained and i'm going to glue the little girl on it to kind of create a first layer and even if I put it there we can still see the flowers so this is interesting so first I'm gonna start by inking that little girl and then I'm gonna glue it but before gluing it I'm going to glue it in the middle and I'm going to do the stitching all around so it's going to be well secure. So I'm going to glue. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to put some glue. And I like to have a bigger piece of of uh, parchment paper or tracing paper because I want to tear it and I need some space. I'm gonna let 
like a good gap but not too big but this will act as a layer instead of uh, a lace that that could be a lace that could be a tool that could be something else but it's cheap weight and i'm gonna add other laces anyway so that way i can still see my flowers and i can just do maybe a little cluster here of lace so i can i can see so one thing you have to remember is the journal is that size and at the end we're gonna have a sari silk in the middle that will attach the journal so don't put the picture or whatever you're adding in the middle don't add it in the middle because you're gonna have the sari silk here or chiffon silk so you might as well pull it up a little bit so the the sari silk will pass at that level so you have to remember that that you're gonna have a sari silk when you're creating your design you have to take that in consideration I like that, so I'm going to work on creating a little cluster here of laces and then I'm going to show you my end result. This is hard to show, but I've created what I want behind the little girl. So I want some polka dots here, like a little ruffle in the corner. I have a bit of lace, pink lace, and then I have some pink tulle that will be a little bit wavy. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, it doesn't hold well. So instead of trying to glue all that, I'm going to place them correctly and go on my sewing machine and do some stitching to hold them well and i don't care because i'm gonna glue the little girl on top of it and in the inside i'm gonna glue something else as well that will hide my stitching so this is how i'm gonna do that okay just to show you how i do that in more details i placed I fold my my cover like if it's just to make sure I have the good measurement I place my little girl and I decided to place my pink lace first I wanted to this little flower to show so I didn't I, I placed my lace a little bit lower and this looked good to me so I hold it removed the little girl, opened the, the cover, and did a stitching here, as you can see. Not too long, and I used a zigzag because it's lace, so I just think that it holds better, but not a big deal. So I, I started with that. Now I'm gonna take the other portion I'm going to take the tool because I want to put some tool and I want some uh, some folds there, like a little ruffle. So let me see how it looks. I'm going to do one fold here just to make sure that it looks great. If I hold that and I place my tool, so maybe my my ankle is not good do i want some at the top so i'm playing a little bit like that and when i'm gonna like it this is where i'm gonna hold it remove that do a stitching here and then place the rest and go like that until the tool is kind of secured with two three places you can do that by a uh, end stitch like just a little dot there that will help you with lace and tool because if you try to glue that uh good luck <laughs> it's it's hard maybe um hot glue is better because uh, it dries fast okay so this will look like that so far so you can see that it goes over the lace 
on the side here as well it doesn't follow the lace and how i've been able to attach it is i started with this then i placed the middle i did another stitch and then i did a fold here and i did another stitch there so i attached at three places and now i just need to figure out here my little um polka dot ruffle like that and secure it the same way so i tried like i wanted to start here and i secured it but i don't like the end result i mean if i place that i should at least come close to those leaves here to kind of do a little bit the corner so there's no mistakes there's no problems here i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut another piece of polka dot and i'm gonna add it on top of it like starting here maybe to there so that's the way i'm gonna use it i'm gonna fix that i am back so i i added another piece here literally another piece and if i place my little girl this should look like that so we are good to go. Maybe I'm going to trim a little portion here with my scissors so it merge well because this is kind of too square here. So I'll just trim a little bit and um, that would be it for that. And I'm going to I'm going to do a third stitch there. So this is what it looks like. I added a third line of stitching and what i like about stitching is i don't know if you can see but it kind of creates under the picture it's like if there's a caution or it's kind of create a bulb like that and um, just by the look it, it looks like it, if it has been stuffed with something which is not the case at all and I don't think you can see that on camera. Yeah, you cannot see at all. But um, but in real, it's I really like the result. So now I can add some details here or here a little bit, something around the picture, and um, we're done with the cover yeah, i'm mm. gonna go with something like that and i'm gonna start gluing but that won't be on camera because that will take too long and i might change my mind again so you'll see in two seconds what's the end result i started by stitching just a zigzag like that it it's holding this and this and now i can glue this these three flowers like that this I'm going to really glue and then I'm going to figure out what I want to do with that. If I want it to come like that, maybe. Yeah, I think it's going to be just something like that. Don't forget that we have like a ribbon or let's say I'm just going to use this. Okay, this this is smaller. We're going to have a sari silk like that like in the middle at the end this is the final version so there was kind of a hole here and i have a bucket of sari silk or chiffon silk you know where they kind of sew the the pieces together it creates kind of i call them a knot because it looks like a knot and i just i just did one little stitch here and it folded like that so I didn't play with that it just fell there like if it's magically its place surprises like that look at that it's just perfect and it it kind of match a little bit the brownish of the picture so and it goes with that and then I can it won't because i'm always careful with adding other colors that would not match with this the ribbon or sari silk at the end because this will be 
holding the signature and doing the closure at the same time. At the back, I'm going to leave it just like that. So now we just need to create a signature and hide all of those stitching by gluing a paper here and maybe a pocket. Now that my cover is done, I'm going to pick my sari silk or chiffon silk or um, seam binding. So I have a couple of options here. I have that pink beige. I can go with some green as well, right? Like if I remove this soft pink and well, and I put some green, this is an option. Or I can go a little bit darker than this. And it depends if you like a contrast or, you know, soft colors. I tend to like and prefer the soft colors. So my choice will be this one. <laughs> Now to cut, to, to figure out the length, I'm going to measure it and let you know how it is because we're going to do the stitching here. The, it's going to hold the signature and then we need it to go there and have enough to do a bow here. How I measure is I find a long piece of chiffon or sari silk that doesn't have a junction there, no stitching to merge two together. And I fold into two and then I calculate, I have to come here and have enough to do a bow here. And then if I look here, do I have enough to go up and down? Like, so I have plenty. So this one is, is okay. And if I measure it, let me tell you, it's about 35 inches. So let's say 36, a yard actually. You need a yard to, to do your closure. A yard of ribbon, sari silk, chiffon silk, or seam binding. This is not the good color, but that would work too. I just love the chiffon silk because it's so soft, so fluffy, so fairy, so feminine. I, I love that. So I'm, I know I have my um, chiffon silk, so I'll put it aside and I'm going to work on, um, on decorating the inside and doing my signature. So for the inside, I'm going to use this collage sheet that comes with the kit. So I did the tearing. It's not perfectly perfect. I mean, we can see the stitching on the sides from time to time. And it's okay because I prefer having tiered edge than straight lines and um, too perfectly perfect. So now I'm going to ink the edges it's gonna be better and um, I'm gonna create pockets just inking like that it makes the whole difference I always finish with a bone folder to make sure everything is glued correctly. This should be fine. All right, so we have the cover. We have some sort of an inside but I'd like to have pockets there for sure. 
now to to um to help with the spine i'm gonna add like a, a sari silk here or chiffon silk and another one outside that i'm gonna glue with my glue stick but then I'm going to go at the sewing machine and do two lines, one on, on each side. This will prevent the paper from the outside to be damaged over time. And uh, because it's going to fold and unfold. And here this will prevent the holes of the signature to be too big and showing up. Um in the journal. So let me do that. This glue would not be sufficient um, to hold forever, but it's the kind of glue that doesn't leave a big mark of where there's glue, cause there's kind of glue everywhere. And it will hold my two pieces at the same time so I can go to the sewing machine and do my stitching without um, without problems because otherwise it's really hard to align them both at the same time they're rolling on themselves and it's it's a mess otherwise so this is the trick that I that I mean that I found over time and it works well for me so I am done with doing the stitching this is what it looks like and if i fold it this will look like that and on top of that i'll have this chiffon silk which is a different color you can put the same color if you don't have lots of choice but i wanted like a soft contra contrast and there's some white there so it kind of merged a little bit so this was for my choice now I won't do a pocket that goes all the way, so I think I'm going to add the pockets later on. I'm going to work on the signature, and I already prepared it. So what I did is I took a bunch of uh, paper, and um, I've cut them into two. We have some mini pages with the kit so I'm gonna pick one and use that one because I printed them on cardstock and I printed both sides so I can definitively use one of those uh, in the middle okay so I've cut one and uh, I um, I've put some ink distress ink to on the sides and it's honestly limit to too small because I'm gonna have to do my three my three all holes within the the card here so it's gonna be limit too small but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be all right still and it will look awesome still so I'm gonna do it now what i need to do is to secure my pages um i did a bunch of video on how to do a signature but this one will be using the chiffon silk so i'm gonna do i'm gonna keep it in the video if you don't need uh to watch that just just skip this part okay so i'm using a big dictionary and I opened it in the middle so I can have the crease here. And then I can put my journal and everything will follow the crease, which will uh, align all the holes. Now you need some paper clips because you really don't want the paper to move. So in order to put your paper clip, you have to hold the journal uh, like that like if it's almost closed and then you put one paper clip and then you would do the same for the other side you hold almost like if it's closed 
and you put your paper clip it won't really hold the one the the card in the middle but at least if the rest of the pages are not moving this will help you a lot because um, it's not as easy to to do a signature like that with a chiffon silk so i'm using three that that should that should be enough uh, i could use a fourth one if i want let's go with four so i just verify that it seems like everything is aligned and now i'm gonna use the little tool i have which i don't know the name but anyway it's to poke some holes so I'm going to start with the middle. You can measure or not measure. <laughs> I'm not measuring. And then I'm going to poke another hole here, like almost at the edge of the postcard. Same for the bottom. All right, so now that I have all of my holes, I keep I keep my little tool in the last hole because this will help them to stay together. Now, I need to find a needle that can take a ribbon, so it's going to need to be a bigger needle. Okay, so I found one that can take the ribbon. Uh, you want one that is big enough but not too big because it's going to create a big bulb here and you have to pass through the paper with it so let's start we want we want to start from outside because we want to use it for the closure so we want the last part to be like that so we start from the outside, not the inside. And if you put your book same, same as, oops, it fell. I'm gonna put it back. If you keep the same angle, that should be easy to, to go through. So, we start from the outside and you can see that it went through easily. Now the challenge will be to get it on the other side. And usually this is where I unclip my paper clip and I kind of go layer by layer going to take a little bit more time but at least it's going to be an easy job and it won't damage too much my pages so let me show you I remove that and instead of going through the whole thing I can remove that too I'll just now that my holes are all there anyway I'm going to create a bigger hole here First, it's going to take, I need a big hole, and that's why I'm adding this, this sari silk or chiffon silk there. But first, it's a cardstock. It's, it's heavy as a cardstock, and um, it's hard to go through otherwise. And the middle hole will need to go through it again. So, so now I'm going to leave like a portion there. All right, we are ready. So if I take my book, the pages, I'll go through the pages one by one. Or maybe I can try with two, but let's see. I go through two pages. And if you have a hard time, just try to pass the chiffon silk one by one instead of the two with, with the needle. So two is okay. Let me take the next two. And 
and I'll go like that. Now that I'm done with the middle, I'm going to start over the same process to go out. So I'll go layers by layers again, maybe two or three. When you're finally outside, you're going to go to the bottom. So because you go page by page or two, three page at a time, don't give you some space with the thread like that. Okay, don't, don't go, don't tie it up too much. So here you can, you can make it. Uh, with no gap for but for the inside you need some space to go through and the last one is to go back in the middle <laughs> so make some space and we do the same process Succeeded. I'm going to remove the needle and now I'm going to calibrate my thread because they need to be the same length and adjusting all of that so they are, there's no gap between the pages. So I need more of this one. Let me see. This one is, which one? If I pull a little bit, it's this one here. So I need to pull like that and like that. What it looks like now, more, I need more. So now it comes from here, I'm gonna pull again. Yeah, and sometimes it's a it's time to unroll it because it kind of twisted on itself. So while I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna unroll it so it looks great at the end. It's kind of an art to do those kind of signature. I hope I don't discourage you. <laughs> but you see why you need a cardstock. Or you would need to put good washi tape. Look at that. Looks great. Huh? Oops, sorry, I'm not in frame. Now if I look here, there is something here too. So I'm not sure, oh, it was coming from this one. So let me see if my pages look okay. So you go like that through the pages to see if there's a loop of, tr of, the, sorry, of the chiffon silk. Okay, it's all good. So now, I just need to maybe unroll this here. Okay, so I unrolled it and uh, now I just need to do a knot here just to secure that. And, 
and I can do the closure. You can do it on the side or a little bit on the front, which is my preference. And then I'm gonna need to trim. I'm gonna trim like you want to leave enough, but not too much. There you go. This is the journal and now we just need to embellish it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.